Hello everyone, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you on another Let's Play episode of Echo Short Stories, and today we are doing lights. Yeah, you guys have quite enjoyed the last couple short stories, so I'm gonna do all of them before I get back into uh oh, what that is. I'll click on that later. Before we get back into our playthroughs, um let me know in the comments which playthrough I need to do next. We have Carl, TJ, and Flynn left. Let me know which one I need to do next. Thanks, guys. But anyway, sit back and enjoy for the next 20 minutes, and let's jump right into it. Lights. All right, here we go. November 2010. Look down at the cup in my hand, trying not to make eye contact with anyone around me. Part of me wished I had stayed home tonight, but Sarah asked me to come, and I'd feel bad turning her down. She looked so excited when she mentioned how much effort she and the rest of her Bible group put into this party. I think this is TJ. Uh, she said that after a recent string of storms, the school wanted people to know that there was a severe weather shelter in the basement of the church. At first I thought it was going to be a bland looking concrete basement, but as it turns out, Peyton's old school gym is beneath the church. It's a small basketball court with bleachers that fold back against the walls and old basketball rims that are pulled up towards the ceiling so that they're out, the, so that they're out of the way. Sarah and her friends strung up streamers and lights along with all sorts of other party decorations, turning this drab old gymnasium into a pretty cool party room. A disco ball hangs from the ceiling, reflecting lights over the room, while a DJ stands off to the side taking a request for which songs to play. So far, mostly 80s and 90s pop songs. A group of adults stand near, strand around the DJ, probably to make sure nothing too risque is played. Almost all of us are standing around talking or avoiding eye contact, save for a few adventurous souls dancing awkwardly next to one another. I finished off the last of my drink and decided to head back over to the punch bowl. I keep my head down, avoiding eye contact as much as I walk through the crowd. I reached the refreshments table and ladled more juice into my cup and sighed to myself. I really shouldn't have come here tonight. My parents are out of town for the weekend and I asked Chase and Leo to, for a ride. I figured since they were already heading to Peyton tonight it would be alright, but something about their mood made me think I had ruined their night. I told them I'd try to find a ride home with someone else and that I'd call them if there were, there were any changes, but they said not to bother. Chase said that they'd stick around, that it's not like they had anything better to do. Mm, the way he said it made me realize I'd made a mistake bringing them into this. I can't take my mind off it now. I tried to make Sarah's night a little better, but ended up ruining Chase's and Leo's. Now I'm avoiding Sarah, and I can't help but feel I'm ruining everyone's night. I have to stop myself from thinking about it too much. I bring my cup to my lips and drink just and drink so that just uh, and drink so that I'm doing something, if only for a few seconds. I end up downing all of it, and I close my eyes. I focus on slowing my breathing and stave off a panic attack I feel coming on. It takes a few minutes, but finally I can feel my heart rate slow and my body relax, only to be startled by a hand touching my shoulder. Hey! Hey! My voice is squeaky. She smiles a little at that. I was hoping to find you here. I was looking for you earlier, but I got caught up with Jessica and Amber. Her eyes dart around and she blushes. Would you like to dance? I can't help, the, can't help the shocked expression that I'm sure is on my face, and my eyes dart to the ground. I start mumbling out an excuse before Sarah reaches for my hand and pulls me to the dance floor. The cup I'm holding slips from my hand as I lose track of myself. Everything seems to fade away as I follow Sarah onto the dance floor. She turns to me and pulls me closer and places my hand on her hip. I hope the music is loud enough to make the gulp I make when, the gulp I make when my hand touches her dress. Sarah is wearing an off-white sundress and with a red ribbon around her waist, and I can't help but stare at how cute she looks. I feel overdressed in my outfit. My mom had laid out my clothes for me before she and Dad left. A light blue dress shirt and, tied pair, and a tie paired with slacks. Sarah's smile snaps me out of my reminiscing as she waits for me to take the lead. I force myself out of my trance and take a tentative step right onto Sarah's foot. She squeaks and pulls her foot away. Sorry! Sorry! Sarah just giggles at me while my face burns. There are a few more missteps before we get a rhythm down, and I can't help but I can't help but feel kind of good about myself. At least I still have a chance at making Sarah's night and not completely ruining it. Her smile seems to have a way of relaxing my nerves, and soon enough I'm smiling back at her. The next song has a faster tempo, and we let go of each other. Sarah shakes her hips and moves her body to match the beat. Mm. I fumble, not knowing what to do with my hands, so I start to copy Sarah and hope she doesn't notice. We dance together, laughing and occasionally singing lyrics to songs we both know. Every now and then we bump into each other, which forces a few laughs out of us, although I'm suspicious that she's doing it on purpose. 
Before long, the tempo of the music starts to slow, and we find ourselves slow dancing once again. Sarah pulls herself closer to me this time until our bodies press together. She looks me in the eye and smiles warmly before putting her, hand on, before putting her head on my shoulder. My body tenses, and I can feel her breath warm against me. I can feel her body press into me as she hugs me tighter. It feels nice. In that moment, I realize just how much Sarah enjoys my friendship. I feel like she trusts me. It's been so long since i felt this comfortable around anyone. Not even Jen or the others make me feel like this. I haven't felt safe around anyone in such a long time, even my own friends. But with Sarah, it's as if I can let my guard down. I feel like I could do no wrong to her. I gently pull her into me, returning her embrace and smile. Unfortunately, my body reacts to this in the worst way possible, and my smile fades as I feel my pants getting tighter. We start to step out of sync, and I can feel her torso grind against mine. I can feel her press her hips into mine. I tense and try to pull my hips away, but that only succeeds in making matters worse as the angle changes and I can feel myself bumping into her. Sarah's hands travel down my back, coming to a rest just above my tail. My entire body is tense and I can feel myself starting to panic before the song fades out for another with a faster tempo. Sarah pulls her head from my shoulder. I love this song! She pulls away and I feel a wave of relief wash over me, hoping she didn't notice or isn't angry about what happened. She starts to bounce and hop to the beat, and I follow her lead, but she turns around and pushes her back into me. She gives me a wink over the shoulder, and as she dances, her body grinds against mine. She sways her body while I try to focus on dancing, but I can't keep up. I try to move along with her, but I keep moving the wrong way. I feel my crotch grind against her body. Panicking, I take a step back, and she follows me. The song seems to go on forever. The music finally changes, and I can't focus on anything other than what's going on in my pants. Sarah looks at me and, before I can react, kisses me on the cheek. Thanks for dancing with me, TJ. Even in the dim lighting, I can see her blushing face. I'm gonna take a break, but I want to dance with you again before the party ends, okay? Uh, okay. I watch as she walks away, not realizing my eyes are on her hips until she disappears into the crowd. A tightness in my pants snaps me back to reality and I fumble to put my hands back in my pockets, hoping to hide what's going on in there. I look around for signs to the bathroom and I make my way out of the party room. The exit is a long tunnel that leads to the church. The air in here is damp and cold, and as I step into the hallway, I feel a wave of cold air hit me. That is a weird-looking tunnel. It's like something in a fucking bomb shelter. Weird. I realize how warm I am. I'm practically panting. I groan as I realize I probably look like an idiot dancing with Sarah. My feet make almost no sound thanks to my natural padding. Actually, I tend to sneak up on people a lot. It is kind of funny when I manage to startle Jenna, although she's made a point of evening the score. The restroom is a one-person-at-a-time one kind, and I lock the door behind me. As I'm going, I remember that Chase and Leah are somewhere around here. Maybe I should go and chat with them. I finish up and make my way down the long, empty hallway. I try looking for Chase and Leo, but it's hard to see much in here. I stand on my tiptoes, hoping to see Leo's ears since he's so tall. Nothing. I circle the room twice before I give up. Maybe they went outside. I make my way back to the exit and walk down the silent hallway again. This time, I turn the opposite direction at the end of the at the end and make my way upstairs and into the church. Oh Lord, what's he gonna find? He gonna find some fucking I don't know, maybe a monster or something. I don't know. <laughs> the chapel ceiling makes the hall seem twice as large as it is. Candles sit lining racks along the walls. A few are lit, but most are not. An altar made of marble and covered in a white cloth with a gold trim stands in front of a big wooden cross. A wooden podium stands off to the left for the priest to give his sermon. Wooden pews fill the empty space in the hall, while a balcony for the chair overlooks the entire the entire chapel. The church organ is on the balcony, and probably so kids don't mess with it. I look through the front door, thinking that maybe they went out for some fresh air. No one there. I make my way to the parking lot to see if Leo's truck is still here. My heart sinks a little lower as I walk toward the lot, the thought of them abandoning me at my weird Christian party at the front of my mind. Luckily, I spot Leo's truck sitting near the back of the lot. So, at least they're still here. But that's not where we parked when we got here. That's weird. Maybe they went to get something. Head over to the truck, passing under the street lamps. The lights are dim and the lot is mostly dark, including the space Leo's truck is occupying. I assume they just got back from wherever they went and are still in there, so I make my way towards the truck. I can start to make out that someone is in the driver's seat, but the passenger seat is empty. <laughs> no, TJ. No, you poor sweet summer child can't quite make out who it is, but it has to be Leo, right? Oh. Ooh, I have an idea. I can see a silhouette outlined by the back window, but something seems off, like it doesn't really look like him. I slow my pace and try to make out what I'm seeing. I stop about 30 feet from the trunk and squint my eyes. 
Suddenly the silhouette starts to move, but not just that. It starts to morph and change and split in two. The second shadow moves to the passenger seat. I start backpedaling as the driver's side door opens, and I'm about to turn and run when the headlight comes on and Leo leans out. Hey, TJ, is that you? I stop and relax, internally chastising myself for being so skittish. Y yeah, I was looking for you and Chase. Where'd you go? I walk more confidently towards Leo, and as I reach the car, Leo closes the door and rolls down the window. Leo looks to his right. Chase is sitting in the passenger seat. He looks a little embarrassed and also a little annoyed. He has a jacket over his lap, and his bare legs are sticking out from beneath it. Leo clears his throat. Um, we just went for, uh... Chase seems to snicker at that. Oh, uh, okay. I'm still not sure what they're talking about, but I have my suspicions. I look at Chase. So, uh, are you going to go to the party? Leo looks at Chase, who sighs heavily like he's just put down a giant weight. Uh, yeah, I bet he did. I don't know about that, TJ. It's kind of awkward. I'm not really into the whole Kool-Aid thing. That last part comes out all mumbly and quiet. I flatten my ears to my head and ball my fists. Quit acting like this is some cult, Chase. My eyes go wide when I realize I said that out loud. Chase rolls his, Chase rolls his eyes and makes a tick sound with his mouth. I know, TJ. I was just joking. I clench my fists harder. No, you're not. You always mumble stuff like that when all I'm trying to do is include you guys. Chase glares at me before responding. Well, maybe it's because I'm not comfortable being in a place that thinks people like me and Leo are disgusting. Who in, who in there thinks you're disgusting? You know most of them. You've hung out with me and Sarah before. So who in there thinks you're disgusting? Chase rolls his eyes again and Leo seizes the opportunity to step in and raise his hands. Look, Chase, we're here on TJ's behalf. The least we can do is stop in and say hi. Chase mumbles something again, but I ignore it. We'll head inside in a bit, Tej, and we'll stick around for a while, and then we'll all head home, okay? Leo's tone puts me at ease again, but I'm still uptight after what Chase said. Listen, I'm going to go for a quick walk to get some fresh air. Leo shoot a quick glare at Chase before turning to me. All right, we'll be inside when you get back, okay? I nod, and because I don't want to have to say any more, anything, any more, anything more, I turn and fast walk toward the road, passing under the dim lights of the parking lot as I do. I notice my lungs fill with cold air and a pressure seems to lift off my body. I wonder if that's what it's like to go through a panic attack. It sure felt like one. I struggle to undo my cufflinks, noticing how shaky, noticing how shaky my hands are, but I manage to undo the pins and let my wrists breathe. I loosen my tie and unbutton the top few buttons of my shirt, feeling like I can actually breathe again. I look around at the long stretch of road that runs past the church. There's some houses nearby, but the road is pretty empty except for the street lamps. One side of the road is a rocky, gravel-covered hill, while the other side is a flat, open ground with occasional house nearby. I stand on the side of the road under the street lamp for a few minutes more, and I don't really know why, but I take a step toward the darkness of Echo. As I walk down the road, I can feel the gravel shift under my toe pads, and it tickles my feet. I force myself to smile, and I try to think about other happy little things in life, but all I can think about is Chase and Leo. I sort of disconnected from what I'm seeing, drawing into myself as I wonder why I thought it had been a good idea to invite Chase. He's always been kind of mean, but today it's even worse for some reason. He'd always been okay with me and my beliefs, but I guess actually bringing him here had been too much. I stop and snap back to reality. It's completely dark and I look up. It seems I've walked past the streetlights on this road. I turn around and look back towards the church. I didn't realize I'd walked this far. I can barely make it out from here. How long have I been walking? I sigh and start to head back, putting my hands in my pockets as I pick up the pace. I'm unnerved with how loud my footsteps are now. Each footstep is like nails on a chalkboard, causing the fur on the back of my neck to stand up. Yep, I can hear those footsteps. As I make it back onto the closest street lamp, I check my phone to see what time it is. 9.30. I wish I had checked before I started walking, but I figure the party should have at least an hour left. I continue walking and go to, my and go to put my phone in my pocket. I miss, and it tumbles to the ground. I stop to pick it up. The fur on the back of my neck stands up again. I thought I heard footsteps. After I stopped walking, there were echoes, but something about a few of them sounded... different. But it had to be echo, right? It'd be the echo, right? Ew, cool. I stand up and look behind me, but I don't see anything. No. <laughs> I squint my eyes, looking into the blackness, but I can't make anything out. I listen for anything, and I think I can hear breathing, but when I try to focus on it, a steady, high-pitched ringing starts to build. 
the more I try to focus, the louder it gets. I try to focus on anything other than that sound, but there's nothing to hear. It's gotten so loud that I don't think I'd be able to hear a jet engine at this point. I feel my lungs start to burn, and I release the breath I hadn't realized I'd been holding. I was so focused on hearing something, anything other than that ringing that I had ignored everything else. I inhale the night air, pierced by the sound of my breath being released. I must be going crazy. I take one last look around and start back towards the church again. But once I step out of the light, I swear I can hear footsteps start up behind me again. I focus on steadying my breathing and listening for any out-of-place sounds again. I keep my head low and try to catch a glimpse of anything out of the corner of my eyes. I look ahead to see how far I am from the church, and my heart sinks. I'm not even close. I look towards the houses on the side of the road, but only one remains between me and the church, and is still a few street lamps away. Even in the dark, I can see that it's a dilapidated mess and no light shines from inside it. There are trees growing all around and overtaking what's left of the house. I consider running and hiding in there, but there's no guarantee the doors are unlo unlocked, or worse yet, maybe that's the person who's following me. Maybe that's the person who's following. Or maybe that's where the person who's following me lives. Just, just keep walking. I can't see anyone, so it might all be in my head. Even if it is someone following me, who's to say it isn't someone from the church? That, that would make them a good person, right? I make it under another street light, and then another, and then another. I pass under another two before I make it in front of a dilap of the dilapidated house. Just then I hear a ragged breathing coming from behind me, and I spin around with a yelp. But there's no one there. A whine escapes my throat as I look into the darkness. Shouldn't I be relieved that no one's there? But I can still hear that ragged breathing. It sounds like it's coming from everywhere. I can hear it to my left, but I can't see anything. I look to my right, but I don't see anything. I spin around, looking in all directions, but I can't see anything. I turn my back towards the light pole, and I slowly back up. Tears fill my eyes. H hello Is is there anyone there? This isn't funny. I jump in surprise when my back touches the light pole. I can hear his ragged breathing coming from my right and moving to my left, just outside the light. I shift on my feet, and I can hear his footsteps echoing in the darkness. H hello That's when I see something. I think I can see him moving around in the darkness, a tall, lanky figure. He bends down and starts to walk on all fours, but what I can make out appears to be what I can make out disappears into the darkness again. He, it, can be heard pacing around me, and as it starts to come closer to the light pole, I turn and block myself in and back myself into the middle of the shining light. I hug my arms to my chest and whimper. I don't know where it is anymore. Whatever it is. I try to listen again, but that terrible ringing pierces my ears. I feel my face scrunch up and tears run down my cheeks. I feel another whimper escape my throat, and I look around into the night. I look back towards Echo, and I see a car driving towards me, and I feel a sense of hope wash over me. I start to look around, making sure the thing isn't going to grab me out of the shadows. I start to wave down the car, but as it pulls closer, the lights dim and I can see into it. My heart sinks, and I back away towards the light. P Toward the light pole as I glimpse the silhouette of horns in the driver's seat and a bright red eye looking back at me. I stumble backwards away from the car. It pulls up next to me and rolls the window down. Ha! Huh. TJ? Carl? Carl nods in a manner that says, the one and only, and he pulls out a cigarette. And he pulls a cigarette out of his mouth? What are you doing? He let out a, I let out a sigh of relief and rush forward, grabbing at the door handle. Whoa there, TJ, I gotta unlock the door first. I fiddle with the handle and Carl tells me to stop so he can open the door. I force myself to let go and I look around, afraid that something is going to jump out at me right before I can reach safety. I can smell something bad in the air now, like someone who hasn't bathed in months or a rotting dead animal. It's closer now. I hear the doors click open and I scramble for the handle again. I can hear Carl mention the door being open and that I could sit in the front if I'd like, but I ignore him, too focused on getting inside the car. Yanking the door, yanking the door, I step back to make room for it to swing outward. In that moment, I feel a presence, and my hair raises on my neck. I rush to get into the back seat, and as I look down for the step, I swear I can see a shadowy hand reaching from under the car. I quickly jump into the back seat and slam the door shut. Carl looks back at me with a smile. What are you doing out here, Tiege? You feeling all right? Without looking at him, I mumble something about needing a walk. I'm still too busy checking to make sure nothing is waiting outside the car watching us or trying to get in. I feel a shifting in my seat, and the car starts to move. I take in a deep inward breath and let out a sigh of relief. I turn and look back over my shoulder at where I was trapped a few moments ago. I blink a few times to clear my eyes, and I can blurrily see the silhouette of a lanky, misshaped person standing just outside the light. But we pull too far away from me to make anything out clearly. I turn back around and lean my head back into the headrest, and I close my eyes, feeling them well up with tears. I jump when Carl starts talking again. 
So, Teach, what the heck were you doing out there anyway? Did something happen? I, I needed to clear my mind, so I went for a walk. All the way out here? I was at the church. I point out the window to the side of the car it would be on, but we're already past it into Peyton. I think about telling him what just happened, but I can't figure out how to explain it right now. Carl keeps asking me questions all the while... All the while, and I tell him about my evening. The party, Sarah, Chase, and Leo. I leave out everything that happened after I left the church for reasons I can't explain. I decide to focus on the part with Chase getting on my nerves, and then he just laughs it off, saying that that's, uh, that's just how Chase and Leo are. He asks if he should drop me off back at the church, and I tell him no, almost too quickly. And I keep going. I don't want to go back there, but I don't want to be alone. So instead, I ask him if I can go over to his place for a bit. He replies with an ecstatic, of course, and messages Leo and Chase to, and I message Leo and Chase to let them know. He mentions that he was going into Peyton to buy a new game that's just come out. He laughs, saying he hopes I don't mind if we have to wait a bit for it. I mumble that that's fine, as long as the place we're going in is well lit. Ah, that was good. All right, so that was the end of Lights and TJ's close brush with one of those creatures. God, I wonder what they are. Anyone in the comments? Uh, know uh, if they're better explained in any of the other Echo games? I would love to know. They're very interesting, and they appear to be helpful sometimes. If it's just one or several, I don't know. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been another episode of Echo. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And leave a super thanks if you can. It always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!